last night? Yeah. Win today, Eagles win tomorrow. It's a great weekend. Yeah. And Penn State, thank you. We're excited and we uh, extend a warm Chester County welcome to Republican National Committee Chairman Ronna McDaniel. We also extend a warm welcome to our Pennsylvania Republican Party Chairman Lawrence Tavis. And of course, we welcome back to Chester County our outstanding candidate for United States Senate and the next senator from the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, Dr. Mehmet Oz. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm happy to report that the new Republican Party is alive and well in Chester County. We have a renewed spirit and energy, and our team has been working hard to expand our outreach to Chester County residents, engage voters, and unite the party. We have many committee people here today, many of our committee. Go ahead. College Republicans from Westchester. Chester County YRs. All of us are focused on the relevant issues important to Chester County residents, safety and the problem of escalating crime and drugs, ongoing concerns about the faltering economy, and parents being shut out of decision-making regarding their children's education. But in a little more than three weeks, on November 8th, we have the opportunity to reclaim our communities by electing candidates who will advocate for common sense solutions for these, to these problems and for policies that empower individuals, families, and businesses. Great candidates like Dr. Mehmet Oz. <laughs> And Guy Shiraki for Congress. And all of our General Assembly candidates, many who are here today. We'll do this together. We'll do this together, united in a common purpose to restore hope and optimism. But it's incumbent on all of us, every single person here, to go out from this event today and carry this, enth this enthusiasm forward, to knock on doors, to talk to voters and spread the word about our outstanding slate of candidates. And now I have the pleasure to introduce our chairman, Lawrence Tavis. So, um, Mehmet Oz was at the game last night, the Phillies game. They wouldn't let him leave because he's the good luck charm. I told him to suspend his campaign until the Phillies finished this sweep with the Atlanta Braves. He didn't agree. Rafi, you've been doing a great job up here in Chester County. Look, there is no message that any of us can deliver today that will be more powerful than you being here today. This election is all about freedom. Freedom to have safe streets and from the escalating crime that's out of control. Freedom to let our parents have a role in their children's education. Freedom from inflation which is a tax on all Pennsylvanians. The Democratic opponents, Shapiro, Fetterman, and Biden, they think those ideas are crazy. I think they're dangerous. We need strong leaders, leaders who will care about all Pennsylvanians. I feel really optimistic about this election. I'm starting to see Democrats and independents coming over to vote and support our candidates. Nobody in this room, no one in this room can say that anybody in Pennsylvania is better off under Fetterman, Shapiro, Josh, uh, uh, Joe Biden, and Tom Wolf. So when I ask you today, stay positive, stay on point. When you knock on the doors today, you're going to be telling voters a better day is coming. And now, Our strong leader, so Mehmet Oz, is here today. He'll be speaking. But in the meantime, I'm going to be introducing a great son of Chester County, somebody I worked with back in 2004. I had a lot more hair back then, uh, and my voice was stronger. Uh, he's going to make a great member of Congress. He's going to beat that Chrissy Houlihan. Thank God, yeah. our candidate, Guy Shiraki.
When we were getting ready for this event over the last few days, I was thinking, what could I say that you haven't already heard? And I decided nothing. So thanks very much. <laughs> we're here today because we still believe in the American dream. Despite everything the Democratic Party has done to crush our economy, to push parents out of schools, to make us feel less safe at home and less safe around the world, despite that, you're here today, we're here today, all of us who are running are here today for one reason. We still believe in the American dream. When we go out and meet our neighbors, we have the confidence of knowing that we can go to every neighborhood, to every apartment building, every senior center, every city, every farm with a message of hope. No matter how bad things have gotten, no matter what they've done to our farmers, our seniors, our students, our single moms, no matter what we, they've done to them, we know we go out emboldened because we offer hope, we offer solutions, we can fix the mess they created. They have wondered, what can we do? It's amazing watching the president as gas prices go up, as people are in trouble, as he flies around to the other side of the planet looking for energy. It's like a game. It's standing right under our feet. We know it here in Pennsylvania more than anyone else. So we have the solutions. We will make America energy independent. We... We will revive our small businesses, the bedrocks of our communities, where we get our first jobs, where we give our first opportunities, where we build communities. We will be the saviors. We will unleash our small businesses to revive our economy. We will support our police officers. We will fight crime. We will make sure that every mom, that every person feels safe to shop, to go out and to live and work. We will restore the rule of law. And our parents, we know that parents are the bedrock of a family and the bedrock of a community. Under our watch, when Senator Oz and I go to Washington, the Attorney General of the United States will never ever, ever threaten parents with using the FBI against them. We will put parents in charge. So as we go out today, we go out happy, optimistic, energized. Why? Because in a few weeks, on November 8th, we will turn this country around. On November 9th, the hard work begins. We will restore the American dream. Thank you. I can't wait to see Guy down there in Congress and uh, greeting uh, former Speaker Nancy Pelosi. <laughs> so this next person I'm about to introduce probably is the one person in the United States that has a tougher job than me. Uh, Ronna McDaniel was elected to the chair of the Republican National Committee in 2017. And like me, she was the chair of her state party in Michigan for many years. She has the bruises and the scars to show it. But in office as the chair of the RNC, she has raised records amounts of money. And our party and our candidates have been the beneficiaries of her fundraising efforts, and we greatly appreciate and thank her for that. She's been a long time. <laughs> a long time community activist, great with grassroots, but most important, she is a wonderful mother to her two daughters, and she has a great husband as well, the chairman of the RNC, Ron McDaniel. Hello, Chester County! Are you ready to fire Nancy Pelosi? Are you ready to fire Chuck Schumer? I am so excited to be
to be with you all today. You guys look great. You're energized. We're ready to go knock doors. I am so excited. Have you noticed? Have you noticed? The Democrats have been in control of the White House, the Senate, the House for the past two years, and none of them are talking about what they've done to make our lives better. They're not saying, oh, you know what? Everybody's better off because what can they talk about? Inflation, gas prices, crime, drugs, an open border. They have nothing to run on. They have done nothing to make lives better. So don't, keep, don't be fooled by them. They've been in control and they have failed the American people. And that is why everything you do between now and election day is going to make the difference. So when you talk to your neighbors and you talk to your friends, point out the fact that lives are harder, that people are suffering, and that the Democrats continually turn their back on the suffering of Pennsylvanians and Americans across this country. They do not care because if they cared, they'd be putting policies in place to fix it. They'd be unleashing our energy independence. They'd be putting more cops on the street. They'd be taking care of our kids who have deficits from the pandemic. What did they do? What did they do? They said, let's put 87,000 new IRS agents on the street. Is that helping anyone? So in the next less than 30 days, every single one of you, you need to talk to your family. You need to talk to your friends. You need to talk to your coworkers. You need to go to church. If you have wronged somebody, you need to make it right and then talk about politics. This is not a time to be bashful or shy because our country is at stake. You all look great. You look so well rested. You are such a good looking crowd. By November 9th, I want you all to look like crap, okay? I want you to look like crap because you have given every possible thing to this election because the best way to change a vote, the best way is talking to somebody you trust. So when you talk to your friends and you say, I was just with Mehmet Oz, let me tell you about who he is and his plan for this country. And I was just with Guy Shiraki. Let me tell you about what he's going to do in Congress to make our lives better. When you have those conversations individually, that is the biggest, best way to make a difference. I am so excited about your Senate candidate, Dr. Oz. He is such a great man. I've gotten to know him over the past several months. There is nobody that works harder than him. I don't know. He needs to create like some supplement or something, the Oz supplement. I'll take it because he works so hard. He's tireless. He's optimistic. He's going to bring so much energy and passion, and he is going to deliver for your state. He loves the people of Pennsylvania, and he is going to do the right things in the Senate. I'm excited to retire the name doctor. And let's make sure he's a senator. Please join me in welcoming your next senator, Dr. Oz. So I've, uh, I brought Lisa up here for two reasons. I, I don't get to thank her enough in public. The smartest thing I ever did was to marry Lisa 37 years ago. We and I, I married her in the house we live in right now in Montgomery County. And this is one of the children that she was blessed to give us, Oliver. And when Oliver was smaller, she could look up to, you know, look down on him and order him around. She tries it now. It doesn't work quite as well. But, but uh, he's in med school. And I get to talk to him a lot of times about the how his life is different from the life I had when I was in med school at Penn many years ago. And it's not a pretty picture. Part of the reason what you're doing is so important when you go out and get people excited about what we represent, you're talking about changing the lives of lots of people around you. The many who love this country passionately and see it as a land of opportunity, a land of plenty, but it no longer seems to represent that. And by the way, when you go out, bring your kids, bring your spouses, bring everybody, because all of us is better than any one of us, and all of us is smarter than any one of us. So let me tell you a little bit about the family that I grew up in, because I think it will color this discussion a bit. My dad was an immigrant, grew up on a dirt floor, didn't have a party. And I was eight years old. I remember asking him, what party are we going to be? And he looked around and he said, you know what? We're going to be Republicans. And I asked, why are we Republicans? He says, because Republicans have better ideas. When you go out and speak to people and not on doors, that's what you ought to lead with. What are the ideas we have to fix the problems? Everyone understands the crisis we're having in our economy. We know about crime. You can't open the paper without reading about a murder, which is horrible. You shouldn't be seeing how many people died. You should be shocked that anyone got hurt. 
I can't go anywhere, and I won't ask here, but I can't go anywhere where there's not a family affected by fentanyl, which, again, is here. Oh, my goodness. Is that one? Here, come on up here. This is why, I, this is why I'm running. I, I, don't, I haven't met you before, so please introduce yourself. Hi. Um, my name is Leslie Holt. And, and who, who is this? This is my daughter, Lana. Um, we live, my husband and I, two miles away. A criminal came in from Philadelphia, brought three methyl fentanyl, which is a drug they don't even test it on animals. They know the outcome. This criminal drove in to this beautiful neighborhood in his Jaguar, delivered this poison into our mailbox. Our daughter took it because she had physical pain from Lyme. She, my husband found her the next morning, and the criminal that brought this to our home is appealing his sentence. And John Fetterman will be the person who says, okay, this is fine. Give him another chance. He's only had about 50, mind you. He's got a rap sheet two pages long. But he's appealing. I can't even get my daughter's phone back because it has to be held as evidence. 32 years old. She worked at the University of Pennsylvania, caring for animals. She worked at the veterinary hospital. She had so much promise. She had, a, she had pain. She self-medicated. And someone poisoned her. And this is happening all throughout Chester County. And no, no one is addressing it or talking about it. And it's all coming from Mexico and China. Let me make a promise to you, and I'm speaking for Guy. Mimi, don't apologize. You don't have to apologize because you have pain caused by weak, weak leadership, much of it at the federal level. I can promise you that we will close the border with smart policies, allow legal immigration, but we have to close the border because Fenton is not going to kill our cameras anymore. God bless you. Will you wait for me over there? You okay? This is the brave... I mean, I, I, I get goosebumps because I can't imagine what it takes to come up here. But this is the bravery we're talking about. And I often speak about the, the national anthem. The last words are home of the brave. And now in our history more than any other, we have to honor that. You can't be free if you're not brave. That's why it's the last word of the national anthem. And you're a brave woman for being here. For saying what you see, for calling it out. So let's get to the nitty gritty here. Because many of you have stories and that's why you're impassioned and that's why you're gonna walk around and knock on doors and convince people to think differently about this race because it is transformative. Perhaps more than any other in our lifetime. We cannot afford to allow a purposeful misdirection of our nation. I was in Philadelphia at a prayer vigil for all the, the murders that have happened well, you know, we're going to get close to last year's, if not past last year's, 561 murders, the most of any major city in America. Shocking increase from what we're used to. A city that was, I went to, lived in West Philly. I could walk to school. You can't even think of doing that anymore. And in this prayer vigil, someone said, you understand that it is easier for me to find fentanyl than baby formula for our kids. Now, you're all nodding your head. Yes, I was stunned. So I checked into it. She's right. How can the land of opportunity, the land of plenty, leave people with fentanyl but no baby formula? Which, of course, if you're trying to go back to work, is essential for you. So here's my commitment to you. Guy, myself, other Republicans running, we have some, put your hands up, all the state rep candidates, state senate candidates, go, put your hands up, find them. They're all here, they're working their tails off. And every vote, every vote they get is a vote for Guy, and it's a vote for me, and it's a vote for everyone on the Republican ticket. So hustle for all of us. But we can commit right here and right now that we have plans that work for the economy. Literally, you have to stop doing what you're doing now. We don't have to go anywhere new. Just stop doing what you're doing. The reckless spending, the foolish increases of taxes, the, the desire to stifle innovation because you, you want regulations and rules because you think they make us safer, and they don't. Government can't do the things they're promising it can do. We also have a very serious pl uh, plan to deal with the police 
uh, and, and reforming what we have done to them. Because the reason the FOP has endorsed me, Fraternal Order of Police, is because they know someone has to have their back. There are a thousand cops on duty at any one time, because, that, and which is nothing, by the way, for Philadelphia, because they can't find any. The retirement numbers are up 45%. We have to encourage people to bravely defend us. They're not going to do it if we don't have their back. And finally, this fentanyl issue, which we know how to solve. We have very clear plans if we just have the guts to do it. So let me leave you with the one question, the one question that you have to ask every single person whose door you knock on. Because keep focused. If you're not talking about the economy, talking about crime, and talking about fentanyl on the border, you're losing opportunities. Precious moments wasted because there is no way that a voter can look at those three options and think the Democratic Party has answers. Quite the opposite. But here's the one question that you're going to have to answer with them. Are we headed in the right direction? No. Right. Well, if they say yes, make sure you take their car keys because they really should not be driving in that condition. <laughs> right? Like, but if they say no, which 70% of them are going to say no, even Democrats, and remember, we're not, they're moderate and conservative Democrats who will vote for us. There are more NRA members who are Democrats than Republicans. So when you someone, someone says a Democrat, get excited. That's exactly the person you want to talk to because you can convince them. And you're going to say, we stand for change. We stand for the reality that you can balance a budget, stop recklessly spending, and fix our economy, which we will do. You can make sure they know that we stand for an all of the above energy policy in order to keep our environment clean. Because the smartest thing we can do to preserve Pennsylvania's environment is to make sure natural gas is safely being pumped, cleanly being pumped, and piped where it needs to be. We're going to build an LNG facility right here, right here. And that liquefied natural gas facility will bring billions of dollars of revenue to the state, much of the tax, so we can benefit from it here in Chester County, and it will create tens of thousands of high-quality trade jobs, which your children, or maybe you, will be able to benefit from. So if people are worried about jobs, recession, inflation, the answer is right here, right here, literally, in this county. I believe we can have safe city streets, we can have a secure border, we can have parents whose values are reflected in schools, and... And those parents have choice over those schools. And Guy and I will make sure that happens in Washington with very specific ways of letting people put money into a major fund that we can then make available to states and push states to ensure that parents have access with parochial schools being, for me, number one opportunity to rapidly save a lot of lives by getting kids into them. And finally, we can have affordable health care at all. But I'll tell you, the last thing you should tell to people as you knock on their door is that you believe in them because I believe in you. And people, when they know that you believe in them and they have confidence in themselves and they know we can do it because we've got American innovativeness and American grit in our blood, they're going to vote Republican on November the 8th. So go get them. God bless you. Oh, let's get a team photo. Ron, is that okay? We'll get a team photo. So if you know what we're going to stand right in front here. And we'll get, the, uh, we'll get our, one of our young guys with a camera up here, and we'll get the whole crowd. Yeah. Okay. All right, we're coming down here. Look at the cameras there. Thank you for being here. We're going to get right here. Get everybody up front here. Good. Lisa, Lisa, come on. Go look at Oliver up there. Thank you. All right, now, anyone who's a little tech savvy, put your phone on. Let's see what this looks like. Put your phone on AirDrop. I'm AirDropping photos. All right, open your AirDrop. They're going out.